If you have any amounts of upper eyelid exposure, it's over for you. If you have a negative cancel charge, it's over for you. If you have scleral show, it's absolutely over for you. Well, that's actually not true, and it's never that simple. It would be true if you 100% utilize the PSL scale and measure the feature just on a numeric level. Then it would be the case, but in my own scale, which I was working on and improving all this time, I add something else to the mix of the numeric values. Facial harmony, which I discussed in details here in this video. Sometimes things that might be considered a flaw can harmonize well with someone's face, making him look unique. Sometimes that's not the case. Flaws are flaws and will take away from your score. So harmony is something unique to each individual. So in today's video, we will discuss the most to the least attractive eye shapes that men can have and why Asian eyes or monolith eyes are not included in any lists. This video, like many others, will be split into two parts. The first part will talk about basic knowledge about flaws in the eye area, and the second one will talk about the most attractive male eye shapes. If you want to support the channel and get your face evaluated by me with personalized look max and advice, link will be down in the description. If you want to read more about topics like these, you can check out my blog at neurofacebrating.com. Without further ado, let's get this video started. So like I said earlier, flaws are still flaws, and flaws in the eye area 90% of the time are going to be considered major flaws. First for the eye spacing, I used to use the eye width method and I still do from time to time, but as of late, I use the eye separation ratio, which is a more accurate measurement, and anything that does not fit within the range of 0.45 to 0.47 means either the eyes are closer or wider set, both considered mild to major flaws depending on the intensity of the flaw. Next, a negative cantle tilt. Also, there is levels of intensity to this flaw, like all other flaws. A negative cantle tilt is defined by a negative tilt that's measured by a line drawn from the medial cantus to the lateral cantus. Next, upper eyelid exposure, an excessive amount of which is also considered a major flaw. Lower eyelid bags or exposure also a major flaw, although this is mostly common the more you age. Scalera show is also a major flaw, which basically means the scalera area is visibly exaggerated. Next, eyes that bug out of the skull and not deeper set also can be considered a major flaw. And another flaw that's usually overlooked is the dark under eye area. Now let's talk some shapes. Quick note, this is just the eye area and not the face as a whole. Check in the first place and it should not really surprise any of you, it's hunter eyes or pure hunter eyes. And this is because of their rarity and striking masculine appearance. You don't see this eye shape often. They are purely hooded almond eyes. The hooding is horizontal and neutral in tilt, with the positive cantal tilt and downturned medial cantus. Second in place below hunter eyes are almond hunter eyes, which are basically similar to hunter eyes when it comes to specifics. They share the compact form, positive cantal tilt and downturned medial cantus, but they lack the complete hooding. Instead, they have minimal amounts of upper eyelid exposure. A good example of this eye shape is the mixed race slayer Jeremy Meeks. The third place goes to almond eyes. Almond eyes can have slightly higher amounts of upper eyelid exposure than the first two eye shapes and they can have both a neutral and positive cantal tilt, but a requirement of this eye shape is zero scleral show. The fourth place goes to dead or sleepy eyes. This eye shape shares some of the requirements with the almond eye shape, but it can have a negative cantal tilt in some cases and even scleral show, just like some of the examples presented on screen, but in minimal amounts. And the last fifth place obviously goes to bug eyes, and bug eyes can protrude out of the skulls and have all types of flaws, there is no specifications to this eye shape. They are also usually rounder and larger in size. This is my personal opinion of the order of all eye shapes. Now, why are some men can still be attractive even with sleepy eyes or bug eyes? Well, their facial harmony allows them to pull it off. If we go off purely with just numerical rating, then these men will be pulled to the average range and with how girls react to them, it would not make any sense. So black pillars would be shooting themselves in the leg with that logic because average men don't get that kind of attraction from women. Another point I want to add because of the intensity of hunter eyes, they would not suit everyone. For example, if we were to give Henry Cavill hunter eyes instead of his usual almond eyes, it would throw off his usual kind man harmony and might hurt his overall attractiveness. So sometimes things can be complicated. You have to find the perfect mix and balance between numerical rating and understanding facial harmony. That's my opinion. As for Asians or monolith eyes, in my opinion, they are not ugly or attractive either. Their attractiveness will depend on how attractive the rest of the facial features are, if that makes any sense. If the rest of the face is attractive, they are usually going to be attractive as well. If not, well then they are also going to be average or not attractive. This is why you don't usually see them ranked anywhere. 
But what do you guys think about all of this? Do you agree with what I said or a harsher approach is required to rate attractiveness? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. That's it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. A like and subscribe will be highly appreciated. And like usual, catch you guys in the next one.